last October in San Jose, California, we gathered a bunch of end users and they predicted that there was a potential of 39x growth in infrastructure capacity in the next 10 years. In London, last, last November, our members made it clear that this growth has to be sustainable and that our community has to take the lead in finding sustainable solutions to support it. So I want to thank Martin Lynch, uh, one of our advisory council members, and Patrick Oland, the chair of our sustainability committee, for the passion and persistence to get us organized around this topic. In February, we gathered a small team of industry leaders in San Jose to define what problem we were trying to solve from sustainability perspective. It was an incredible session with some very passionate people. We generated 14 pages of notes uh, that were synthesized into a strategy document. We held another session a few weeks after that one to finalize the content for this summit. All right, these, this actually series of three summits. And what, and what I was most encouraged by is that this group of, of people were united, not only to define the vision, but to commit to the work and the work together to get it uh, done. They're driving it. So that vision you can see here is every click improves the future. We can envision a future where digital infrastructure contributes to the global economy and society without harming the planet. So today we have brought together a group of industry leaders across APAC to give their perspectives on sustainability in relations to their regions. So um, joining me on this is, um, I'll run through a quick bio on each of them. Uh, Narendra Sen is the founder and CEO of Rackback, Rackbank Data Centers, uh, which is solving the digital infrastructure challenges of the global tech giants by building Asia's biggest hyperscale data center platform in India, starting with Chennai, and then Mumbai, Pune, uh, Bangalore, and uh, Noida. Second is Raymond Tong. He's the CEO of SunnyVision, the largest data center operator in Hong Kong. Sunny Vision is currently, uh, they currently operate five data centers in Hong Kong, totaling about 60 megawatts of IT load capacity. Among them, Mega Eye is a very famous worldwide um, mega data center networking peering community. And it is one of the most connected data center hubs in the world and also, uh, of course, within Asia. And about two years ago, Sunny Vision launched a new high tier data center called Mega Plus for hyperscaler expansion. And last year, Sunny Vision acquired the last and biggest piece of land in Hong Kong for data centers uh, to be built at $700 million, <laughs> showing its long-term commitment to the business in Hong Kong. That site alone will be over 120 megawatts and ready for service in 2022. Uh, third is Yali Lu, and she is the Executive Vice President of Chiora, responsible for network and strategy, supporting delivery and uh, of large scalable high performance data center campuses in China. Prior to joining Chiora, Yali was the vice president of China Cash, where she was instrumental in driving career neutral data center and building uh, the first internet exchange, which is CHNIX in mainland China. Yali spent more than 18 years with Verizon, including MCI and various executive positions responsible for global network planning, engineering and network product development. Fourth is uh, Dr. David Wang. He's the architect for data center integration and optimization at Alibaba. He's responsible for holistic, holistically optimizing hyperscale data center design and operations to simultaneously achieve high availability and high efficiency. Prior to joining Alibaba, David worked for Microsoft, also responsible for integrating various aspects of hyperscale data centers for optimized availability and efficiency. David spent 20 years working at Teradata and was instrumental in designing, delivering, and maintaining large scale computer systems in a diverse range of enterprise data centers all over the world including some of the world's largest and best. <laughs> For years, David has been working with international colleagues to drive data center resource efficiency and currently is the honorary chair of uh, TGG China. Okay, so, wow, we have quite a panel here. So uh, thank you all for joining. And uh, David, uh, would you give a, a little intro to our Chinese speaking uh, attendees as well? Uh, 那我就简单的介绍一下刚才丁讲的话那个 
要起到一个领头羊的作用，找到可呃可以支持、可持续发展的一个方案。那么到今年二月份的时候呢，业界的领头人主要是呃微软啊、那个谷歌啊、呃 Facebook 啊一些大的那个大的公司，然后那个讨论就是说整个的行业所面临的一个挑战和问题吧。那么这个会议产出了十四页的会议纪要，然后呢，他们从中间又总结出来了 I M 的可以持续的那个可持续发展的愿景和战略，让人们看到了我们的的希望是我们的行业的领头人和专家们不但群策群力，找到了我们共同的愿景，而且都非常呃努力的承诺会达到这个愿景，共同努力。那么从每一次案件都能改善未来这样的一个愿景。我们可以展望一个数字基础设施，为提高全球经济发展和社区质量提高做出贡献，而不损害地球的一个美好的未来。Excellent. <laughs> you summarize what I said very quickly. That was very good. No other short version. Yeah. There you go. So,、uh, well, first off, welcome.、Uh, thank you for joining me in this panel. I'm 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 honored that you're here, and and I love the fact that、uh, we're represented around the world. We have Hong Kong and China and India,、uh, right, and San Francisco, as you can see behind me. And and I know Narendra, you were trying to put up the Taj Mahal, but it covered your face <laughs> instead of the background. Exactly. So, well, there you go. It looks like a dance a dance hall. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Um, so I, I want to start this panel.、Um, first off, you guys have you know really diverse experience、uh, in very specific areas、uh, within APAC. You've done scale、um, both as a supplier and as as、uh, end user customers. And I I want to know from you personally what what does sustainability mean for you? So why don't we start with you, Narendra? Okay, thank you very much.、Uh, I'm excited to be here, and、uh, yeah, so.、Uh, The best part is we are startup in data center, and we are starting from scratch. So we have opportunity to adopt whatever available in the technology side to optimize the energy.、Mm. And、uh, sustainability means what others has given, like Sunita and uh, uh, Blair has mentioned. This we have a common goal, and we believe that internet was built for、uh, solving global problems.、Uh, And making it normal to everybody can solve this, right? So bringing the global problem together, and uh, uh, I think it's it's for our industry side, the maximum energy consumption is by the industries globally, anywhere in the world,、hmm. uh, be it、uh, manufacturing or be it any industry service and all. So in India, it has the same, like 56 percent energy is consumed by industry, and.、Uh, So, as a reg bank, our vision to adopt sustainability uh, from uh, day one and implement it and adopt and reduce the carbon emissions in whatever ways.、Uh, so, vision is very simple: to make our mother nature again the same, and for our future generation.、Um, Future generation, it will support them as well and give them a direction that what、uh, in our past、uh, people supported, and they can continue uh, uh, the same. Excellent, and and I, I again, you've got such a perspective. We're going to double click into India as well,、um, right? Just just you personally and how you've you've grown up in the in the country, and also what you're doing with that business. And you know,、um, I want to go to Yali as well.、Um, you know, you've had a ton of experience across China. And, and growing at scale. So, you know, you you personally in your career. So, what what does sustainability mean to you? Well, sustainability.、Um, I think from my perspective, I really think it means that we need to be able to maintain this、uh, beautiful blue and uh, green uh, planet that we live in in the、mm. in the long run for the many generations to come.、Uh, if we look at、uh, China, for example, it's the Uh, the country that have the the largest the power consumption,、um, it it account for about twenty six percent of the world total energy consumption. So,、wow. to make to make it sustainable,、uh, yeah, it's very important. It's basically, I would say, it's uh, the top uh, strategic uh, uh, um, focus of of the country. One of the 
uh, strategic focus of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to, to see it, uh, sustainability as the, it's like the highest mountain that the world need to conquer. Uh, right. it's, higher, it's higher than, than uh, Mount Everest because it, it just, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be very hard to, to really make uh, it happen. And, uh, but we all need to strive toward it. Yeah, absolutely. I, you, <laughs> the stat you said, 26% of global energy consumption is in China. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. So that <laughs> definitely some things have to start in China, right? It's, a, it's about China's uh, scale. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, happening in China from renewable energy perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we're going to double click into that too. Um, uh, so let, let's go to Hong Kong. Um, Raymond, so what does sustainability mean to you? Um, yeah, thank you for, for inviting me to, to share. Uh, to me, actually, personally, obviously, what, what the other speakers uh, to share about uh, building something long lasting, um, for the environmental impact, it's, it's really key that, that all of us are driving towards. But at the same time, uh, from a business point of view, I, I look at sustainability also from a business model point of view, um, that we need to have the right business model that is sustainable, with the right product, with the right service model, with the right channels. And also from a company, team culture point of view, uh, we need to be sustainable as well. Uh, productivity, for example, some of my staff, uh, are uh, telling me that, hey, we work overtime. I mean, we don't mind working overtime. But my question to them is like, is it sustainable mm -hmm. uh, in a prolonged basis working overtime? So we are more looking at it from a holistic point of view, environment, business model, and team culture and productivity. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it reminds me of what Blaze was talking about with responsible business, right? Renewable energy is a portion of it. Uh, right, just there's so many pieces that that make up sustainability, and so um, yeah, it's important to actually have a balanced approach to it all because you can't burn out your staff at the same time, right? Everything's got to be sustainable. Well, David, let's let's go back over to you. I, I know you're in the San Diego version of uh, uh, is that the Forbidden City? No, it's not. Okay, I got it wrong. <laughs> That was pretty close. Well, tell me, I mean, you've been, you've been um, in end user companies for a long time, Microsoft, Alibaba now, and, you know, give me your perspective on what sustainability means to you. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for, uh, uh, for having me on this panel. Um, all the other panelists have already talked about the, uh, the, uh, the larger scale things. And I, I, I want to talk about, I want to focus on the, li on the, on the most specific things to the data center industry. So mm -hmm. the first time I was involved in this uh, sustainability was when the green grid was formed uh, in <laughs> 2007, right? Yep. And, yep. and I looked at the number at the time um, uh, based on the uh, DOD's uh, uh, report, uh, the data center energy consumption at the time in the United States was mm -hmm. 61 billion kilowatt hours. Right. And that, that wasn't scared, uh, uh, staggering. What, is, what scared me was they made a projection, right? And if we followed the technology trajectory and the, the, the power consumption is going to skyrocket, given right. that the digital industry is exploding and all that stuff. So if mm -hmm. you look at it today, just like you said, and, uh, and all the industry leaders uh, got together last year in October and they predicted that the, the data center industry is going to, in, uh, uh, going to expand 39 times. 39X, up to yeah, 39. 39X, right? <laughs> so if, if we don't do, if we don't innovate, if we keep on the same track and guess what? We're going to use up all the energy, all the resources on earth. Mm -hmm. This is not sustainable. Yep. And we, can't, we cannot continue on that path. Yeah, and I think that's that's such an important perspective because, you know, um, it doesn't become a crisis until it's a crisis to you, and yet things can be just impacted. You know, I, I look at um, that report. Jonathan Kumi uh, was uh, from Stanford who put that report together for um, for the DoD, right, or DOE. Yeah, uh, DOE, yeah. yes. Yeah, the Department of Energy in the U.S. And what they were talking through was really the U.S. consumption. And I would say in the last w month. I started looking at predictions about what the future would look like. So, um, you know, today, if you take that report and look globally, they say there's 500 and or 205 terawatt hours of consumption for data centers globally right now. 205 terawatt hours. All right, 
200, so, I mean, that is a significant amount of draw, but it only represents 1% of the actual global draw. And what Yali just said, 26% is just coming from China. That right, Data centers are still a small amount. But take this pandemic. Take uh, Zoom, right? The amount of growth in that. The, up to 200 right, million people are actually on that one. Now take every other technology platform, 700 million, right? Or 700% growth on, on Microsoft Teams. Everything is expanding because now everyone in the world is dependent on digital infrastructure more and more. Now, if you go back to the green grid, the beginning, you know, we had Christian Blatty on the panel um, in the previous summit. He's the father of PUE. He donated PUE, right, into the green grid to help drive as a standard. And that flattened that curve. I do believe that PUE and the focus on efficiency and measurement really did change the trajectory you talked about, David, right? Without that, we would be in one of these places where we're consuming a significant amount more, but also a lot of the little hanging fruit has been picked. So now we're at the point where we've got to rethink <laughs> how we do this. And then data growth and everything is just massive. So I, I want to tie this in because that's a little bit of a backdrop on, you know, the demand that's coming. IDC said that there's going to be 175 zettabytes of data generation every year by 2025. That's 3.5x of what we're doing right now. 44 to 50 zettabytes is being generated right now. Okay, so take the sustainability vision we just said. Every click improves the future. Okay, when you unpack that again and think about the context that I just laid out, if we have a three and a half X data growth, we have emerging countries, and we're gonna talk about India and others as well, massive amounts of digital infrastructure that needs to be built. We're gonna have more and more capacity rolling back out, more and more consumption. It's inevitable and that's okay. But we need to figure out technology wise, how do we make every click improves the future happen? So I would love to get perspectives from each of you in your regions, you know, what, what does that actually mean to you? How would you apply that, you know, in your businesses and your thinking? So Yali, I'd like to start with you. In China and Chiro, what, what does that mean to you? Yeah, well, in, uh, in China, um, basically, um, as we know China has a very high energy consumption. And uh, mm -hmm. if you uh, look into it, actually the renewable energy percentage uh, for 2019, uh, for the the wind power was uh, around five percent, and uh, solar around three mm. percent. Um, so, but but it's a uh, it's a significant increase from the year before. Actually, wind is a, a twenty percent increase, and uh, solar power was a fifty percent increase from the year mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. and that's the the number uh, based on actual consumption, and actually the uh, uh, the capacity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the the capacity for wind power and solar power is actually much uh, higher in yeah. available in in China. So mm -hmm. there are a lot being done um, uh, by the government and uh, by the um, uh, industry to uh, work together to actually uh, be able to use those capacity and drive for a higher percentage of uh, renewable energy. And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of program uh, uh, on that at, at this time. Yeah, yeah and we're going to we're going to talk more about renewable energy, and and you know I think of that's an element within the strategy. And so you know whether it's supply chain or you know a, a low carbon concrete, uh, you know uh, all of these aspects, you know digital waste. There's a huge amount of replication of data across so many different places, six replicas of all those different things. You know, and um, you know, the, the, this is a, a very short but very powerful vision statement. <laughs> From a, a Toroya perspective, um, so we, we actually, you know, we build a hyperscale data center in mm -hmm. mainland China. And we, uh, from a design perspective, we, uh, we make sure from a technology and design perspective, we design it to be at a low PoE. So it's, uh, we make sure it's uh, below 1.2. And that's, mm -hmm. that's one perspective. And uh, uh, the other is that, you know, it's all in the action, right? We, we work with the state grid and also with the uh, 
National Energy Administration on a variety of uh, uh, green energy, uh, renewable energy uh, project so that we could provide the customers with with a specific, um, uh, with basically 100% renewable energy option. Uh, yeah. Supply. And it's, again, there's so much, so much that can and will be done uh, in, in China. I know that, right? Because um, once you put your mind behind it, there's just, man, that, that country, country scale happens. So I, I want to go over to Hong Kong and, um, and, and talk to Raymond a little bit about this too. So you've heard this vision, you know, you've been on the other summit as well. Um, I'd like to get your, your perspective. What does it mean to you? Yeah, well, well, in Hong Kong, obviously, I mean, we, we all inspire by this uh, big ambition to, to how to build a sustainable world. Uh, mm -hmm. But for Hong Kong, um, obviously, we, sit, we face our own challenge. I mean, Hong Kong is one of the world's most densely populated cities. I mean, with 7.5 million people in a small place. Right. Uh, I mean, I mean, in, uh, we, we are like actually one of the, the, the top uh, densely one. I mean, we have 7,000 people per square kilometer. In, in some local district, it's 50,000 people per square kilometer. Uh, wow. So naturally, it's all high rises building. I mean, you've been to uh, <laughs> Hong Kong, and you've been to one of our data centers, like Mega I, which is 33 floors, uh, high rises. And um, as a result, it's uh, not easy, I would say, to, to do renewable energy uh, due to the limitation of space and also very expensive uh, sure. space and land. But I mean, that's not an excuse. Obviously we need to do something about it. And um, uh, so we actually already started uh, working with uh, one of our uh, local power company partner, uh, China mm -hmm. Light and Power CLP, uh, yeah. which is one of the two power company in Hong Kong uh, on uh, using the renewable energy certificate program. Uh, basically they, they use uh, locally generated uh, renewable energy from solar panel, from uh, wind, and also from uh, landfill gas, because we do quite a bit of uh, reclamation uh, yeah. in Hong Kong. Uh, so there's landfill, and after so many years, then the gas can be used. Um, so, so we actually started using it, and uh, although it's not cheap, it's actually 50% higher, more, more, more costly than uh, normal electricity. Uh, but anyway, we would like to lead the change uh, ourselves, and also currently working with our major customers uh, to 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 ask them to to join our forces, but um, I, I would imagine it's uh, it's it's going to be a, a a process, but uh, we're working on it. Yeah, and usually visions are almost unattainable, and mm -hmm. that's that's a good vision. That means you got to really work hard <laughs> to achieve that one. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to go over to David. Uh, what's your perspective on the vision? Um, okay, I'm a technical guy, so I come from <laughs> I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll take a, a technical approach to it. Um, I'm, I'm really happy when I first heard this vision and, uh, and, and, and happy that uh, I am is taking this uh, lead role uh, to promote the, uh, the, the sustainability on a global scale. Um, but more importantly, with the focus on the unifying all uh, stakeholders. Yeah. So going back to the Green Grid days and uh, uh, we talked about a PUE and then I was instrumental in bringing the, uh, the Green Grid into China and mm -hmm. to help the Chinese industry, the data center industry, and uh, to and introduce the best practices and the metrics developed in US, EU, Japan. And, and well, we achieved some uh, uh, good results, but if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the PUE reported from US companies, it's somewhat different from the, the PUEs from the Chinese company. <laughs> and, and it's not helpful, it's confusing, right? And with your effort and, uh, and, and this uh, kind of uh, unifying all stakeholders, and I, 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 I think this is going to lead the whole world uh, into the next phase of the PUE, just like you said, the PUE uh, has done its work and we needed to go further. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Narendra, let's talk about India itself. So uh, from your perspective, what, what does every click improves the future mean to you? So I think this is a great vision. And, uh, this will uh, help emerging market and uh, operator like us uh, 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 to solve those problems for the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, in perspective is uh, we are 1.3 billion people and uh, uh, it's a scale like China, what Chayora team has mentioned. Similarly, 
uh, India uh, energy consumption is very high and uh, uh, around 137 percent growth uh, we have seen in the energy solar energy installed installed capacity wise the government made efforts so it's compromise uh, leadership like leadership on the i mission side or the uh, team side or a, a company side uh, so our prime ministers has uh, uh, signed the paris agreement and afterwards uh, everything has started toward the sustainability side that's great and, and because of that uh, it's a growth of 137% uh, 137% and the second thing is in india is now fifth largest uh, country in the world in terms of the solar uh, installation capacity okay. and the similar solar is now 100 gigawatt uh, and government has ambitious plan to deploy 172 gigawatt of solar energy and other thing is um, mother nature has given us uh, tera, terawatt of energy unlimited energy there is no limit the problem is uh, storage <laughs> in data the problem is storage is same the problem in energy as well sure. so i think we should adopt uh, 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 providers who is going to store this energy because uh, in eight hours a day you cannot uh, store energy for 24 hours at this point of time the solutions is not available and we as an industry should work on that direction to store in low cost yep yeah so regbank vision is to uh, enable this for our customer and for the industry so we like uh, one startup we have we are in discussion mm -hmm. um, uh, they uh, uh, come up with uh, uh, salt, uh, sea salt storage, like using sea water and create a storage solutions. And similarly, a lot of others are doing geothermal solutions, storing energy into the ground and all those things. Another thing is liquid cooling solution. These kind of new approach has to be adopted by the customers first. Because the challenge with the operators, we can't take those solutions and implement for the customers. Customer has to adopt this yeah so customer driven yeah I, you know i this this brings a, i want to double click into two topics here uh, and you, you raise it you raise the first one um and and that's about uh, just the renewable energy and i remember at narendra when i was out uh, in in um, mumbai with you uh we uh we were walking through some stats and uh you were sharing um uh, the cost of renewable energy in india can you expand a little yeah. bit more on that yeah yeah of course uh, i forget that to mention so um, uh, renewable energy is now 30% cheap compared to grid pricing in India. So customers don't need to pay <laughs> premium for that. So, so hold on, hold on, hold on. 30% cheaper than the cost of the grid. You, you realize that, that Raymond just about fell over right there. It's 50% right. more, right, in Hong Kong. Right. right. So there right. might be a little more land in, in, in India. And again, the, the government's behind this, right? Yes. Significant yes. amount of investments and alignment, I think, to go get that uh, renewable energy. Right. So they enable the 100% FDI and they make a relevant policy to make it happen. Say, mm -hmm. all driven by the investment and combination of entire industry and adoption as well. Say one more example, in Delhi, diesel generators are now going to be banned. Mm. And similarly, across India, and the government will have plan to, I, I, I'm guessing that, and maybe it's it's that, that every industry has to give a commitment of using a, a sustainable energy solution. So I think the government is making it really easy for everyone to adopt. Yeah. So that, 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 that um, I want to go to, to David on this one, but um, you know, here you've got the government specifically stating requirements, you know, and um, I look at uh, um, the fact that they say that we're going to, to sign the Paris Accord, we're going to do renewable energy, we're going to incentivize, like all those things are aligned, right? Um, so in, in China, um, and, and David, specifically as an end user, because what, what Narendra just said is there has to be adoption, there has to be drive. And I remember what Raymond was saying that, you know, hey, the customers, if they could work together with us, we can go potentially solve this. Well, give us your perspective as an end user. What are the challenges and things about a renewable energy for when you, you know, for what, uh, say, Alibaba is doing? The renewable energy uh, uh, on paper is great. And uh, from, uh, from end users' uh, standpoint of view, uh, there are challenges, uh, obviously. And uh, number one, uh, the, the government support is 
at this stage is 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 essential without government support and you you, you just don't go uh, get anywhere um number two really is uh you need the infrastructure right and uh, you you can build your own solar farm and all that stuff you need the infrastructure to support that Right. And uh, I, 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 I read somewhere uh, uh, last year, um, in fact, that in China, there is a lot of waste from the renewable energy, the solar, mm -hmm. the wind, because there is a lack of uh, infrastructure to port the, the, the energy being generated from the renewable sources into mm -hmm. the grid. So, so these are the things, and, and I think end user alone cannot solve this problem. It's the government and all the stakeholders need to work together. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so, Yali, um, you know, we, we talk about China's scale. And, you know, you just, you just heard from Narendra that, you know, there's alignment. And then you just heard from David that there's, there's a challenge of, uh, of wasted energy. You know, there's lots of sun and lots of wind and lots of things. But if it's generated at the wrong time, that energy just kind of dissipates somewhere else. Right. So from, uh, you know, renewable energy for Chiora, specifically in, in uh, Tianjin, right? That's the first data center campus that you guys have built out. Yep. So what's what, what in that region or that area? Is there is there anything specifically the government is doing to incentivize or help with renewable energy? Yeah, uh, it's not just that region, but throughout the country. Mm -hmm. The government has incentives to support uh, to bring more renewable energy. Uh, into the uh, to put it into use. So I, I just like uh, David mentioned, there are more capacity uh, mm -hmm. to generate the renewable energy, but actually bring it to the grid and and be able to get it utilized properly uh, is a challenge, and that's being addressed. That that's uh, like what I was mentioning: the uh, solar uh, power actual usage in mm -hmm. 2019 increased by 50 percent so a lot of that have to do with actually be able to properly uh, bring those uh, power into the grid and and get it used so yeah. in Toroya, we we yeah we look at the different uh options and work with the uh the the state grid and the, the national energy administration on the options to uh, provide to to the on the program that provide renewable energy. Uh, there are, there are a variety of programs, and uh, uh, our goal is to make 100% renewable energy available to our customers as needed. Got it. Yeah, and and so okay, we look at these large scale campuses, then we look at the concentrated stuff in Hong Kong, and uh, the challenges you just talked to through Raymond. You know, um, I. I I look at uh, what, what Narendra was saying about energy storage, and I absolutely agree. There's, there's no way to get renewables to a price point that's gonna be consistently viable unless you've got some way to store that energy that's gonna be a base load. Because right now base load is coal, natural gas, you know, other things like that that says it's consistent. And so, um, you know, I, is there something in Hong Kong uh, that is, is being focused on to, to, from the government or others around this, you know, getting um, something that's cost effective? No, I, I think um, the, the brilliant minds in, in the Hong Kong government and also in our communities, mm -hmm. uh, including the power companies and also including uh, data center providers uh, or the major infrastructures uh, that use a lot of power, like the airport, uh, sure. and so and forth. Uh, actually, uh, working together uh, as a community to explore in a limited space uh, environment like in Hong Kong, uh, mm -hmm. what what breakthrough uh, can we do from a technological point of view, from a design point of view, or from a storage point of view? Uh, yeah. Things like that, that 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 otherwise is just we we are trapped in at a corner that 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 we cannot do anything. That's not the answer, obviously. So we need to uh, have some major breakthrough, hopefully in the near future. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, again, whoever breaks that mold, right, figures out, solves that equation when it comes down to energy storage for renewable power generation uh, is going to change the planet. And I will tell you that there's, there, is, there is work on this and being able to have beyond grid scale, right, a gigawatt plus energy storage for more than 30 days. Mm. There is stuff under development right now. And this is man-made, right, as well as natural 
right? Storage uh, type cavern things that can be done. And so, so the, you know, we're going to be talking about this in the working session about ideas and things that are coming in, you know, about renewable energy. But I want to shift topics here. Here we, we looked at getting energy to the data center. But now I want to look at the data center capacity itself. Okay. So, um, and I want to start with Narendra. Because one of the things that stood out with me in my, my India trip just earlier this year, when we could actually leave our houses, um, <laughs> was that there is a total of 400 megawatts of data center capacity in all of India. Correct? Yes. Yeah, correct. Just, just keep that in perspective. 400 megawatts total in the country <laughs> of capacity. So yeah. and you, you have 1.3 billion people, right? Right. You're catching right. up to China. 1.4 billion in China? Both. Something like that? Yep. <laughs> a lot. Okay. So capacity, growth, you know, when you look at it, it just seems to me that you're here and it needs to go like that, right? When it comes to data centers. So you're building hyperscale. Tell me about the capacity side of this. Like out of 1.3, 600 million is already online and government making the fundamental things are connecting people first mm -hmm. and go toward that connecting 500,000 villages because India's uh, majority population lives in villages, yeah. which is like 60%. So government uh, uh, has uh, ambitious goal that they will connect in another three to five years. Mm -hmm. And, and the, if we talk about the data center side, uh, data center, uh, only 3% hyperscaler, large hyperscale customers, OTT customers had deployed their capacity in India. The rest 97% is outside India. Yeah. So demand is huge and more than 200, even one side is customer demand. Another side is India's own demand where the digitalization is happening. More than 200 smart cities. Imagine that billions of devices will come up in these cities with billions yeah. of people are going to consume. Uh, and use those devices and already using it. So, so I think demand is going to be anywhere. We discussed eight gigawatt to 10 gigawatt in another five to seven years. That what we have, we believe on that. And, uh, and that's again, challenge for us, for the industry to how to sustainably, sustainability adoption, we can deliver this solution to the customers. Right. Yeah. So, so let, let, just, just listen to what you just said. That's a 20x growth in capacity just in India. Just in yes. India. We talked about 39x growth, right, from the overall um, end user summit itself. So just the, the emerging markets that have uh, this massive growth potential um, there, you know, I think of LATAM, Africa, right, um, just across India, just, just them alone is just is going to be huge, huge growth. And I want to go to David for this on the capacity side. Your former employer, Microsoft, we had uh, Noelle Walsh on a, uh, on a fireside chat. And she gave a staggering number. Uh, she said, because of all the demand, they turned up 100 megawatts in two weeks. 100 megawatts in two weeks. <laughs> wow. Okay, so they basically did 25% of all capacity in India in two weeks. That's mega scale. That's hyperscale, right? That's one one hyperscaler turning up capacity for demand that's happening because of the pandemic. So, you know, when you look at it from an end user perspective, what does, what does the capacity growth look like? You know, and I, cause there's Alibaba and all the other peers, you know, and specifically in China, you know, Yali talked about 20%, 6% energy consumption globally. I'd assume this industry is blowing up when it comes back to digital infrastructure consumption. Right. Absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm not sure if you have heard, um, uh, in March, late March, uh, yeah. the Chinese government held a meeting and announced as part of a stim stimulus package, uh, there, are, uh, there is a data center is one of the seven pillars of mm. this new infrastructure build out. It's going to be huge. We it's have arrived. Be, oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be huge. So, so, so last I checked the, uh, the hyperscale data center, numbers of data centers. In yeah. the U.S., uh, uh, well, U.S. has about 25% or 30%, I forgot, uh, mm -hmm. the global total hyperscale data centers. China has about 8 to 10. So think about the number of people in China and the, the, the size of the economy. Yep. And the growth is just, just beyond the imagination, right? And I think the timing for this, this vision 
right? Every click improves the future. Cannot be better. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the large companies inside data center, uh, inside China, and uh, the data center uh, providers are start, think, start thinking about building more data centers. And if we can get some of the strategic uh, uh, thinking and, yeah. and, the, and the sustainability initiatives baked into the plans, Right. And we'll see the benefits years, uh, for many, many years to come. Absolutely, absolutely. And Yali, I, I, wanna, I wanna line this back up because the comparison here. What's the size of your data center in Tianjin? Well, uh, when it's all built out, our campus is 300 megawatt. <laughs> okay, so hold on. Let's, <laughs> one campus in Tianjin will have 300 megawatts. The entire country of India currently has 400. So, so this is just massive builds, right? Massive opportunities because the demand is not going to stop. So capacity-wise, um, you know, you're seeing you're seeing this um, this demand um, happening within Tianjin and and I guess as well as Shanghai and others, right? You've got additional yeah. capacity being built out. Absolutely, yes. Got it. And so, what what, what does that demand look like uh, as far as the 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 growth rate within oh. your area? Well, you know, for you mean for China, I I I, I don't have the exact number uh, because mm -hmm. it depends on how you uh, calculate it. It's a multi-tenant, what's not. Uh, mm -hmm. But I I will say I I just like David mentioned, it's a data center is part of the the new infrastructure uh, yeah. put out by the government. So we would just expect to see tremendous growth in the hyperscale data center. Uh, in, in, in the years to come, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And when China focuses, big, big things happen. So that's really cool to see. It's one of the seven pillars. So let, let's talk about Hong Kong now. <laughs> you yes, know, yes. take the, the India horizontal and turn it vertical, and that's your mega I. <laughs> yes, indeed. Or mega indeed. plus. <laughs> indeed, indeed. No, no, I think Hong Kong, because well, Hong Kong, it's only, a, I mean, a small city with 7.5 million people, but is unique in a way that it's a gateway yeah. uh, connecting the world and also part of China. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, um, uh, while we are expanding, right now we have five data centers in Hong Kong in our campus, a 60 mm -hmm. megawatt, as you briefly mentioned, and we are building our sixth and the seventh, two more sites. Um, once those are ready in the next two or three years, our whole yeah. campus is roughly about 200 megawatt. Um, and, but we're gonna launch it phase by phase because yeah. Uh, while we are seeing that the data growth and also demand, customer demand are growing, it's 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 an inevitable trend. Uh, but it will also be gradual uh, because the nature of Hong Kong. It's I think the connectivity nature uh, peering uh, is more important, and that doesn't use sure. too much space. Uh, but 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 how many cross connect that you can connect um, uh, in a low latency nature in a resilient manner. Um, and all these are, are important from the ecosystem play point of view. And uh, we as an infrastructure professional, we are fixated uh, in Hong Kong to, to strengthen this part of the business and to yeah. strengthen the community uh, to serve the world. And I will tell you uh, just, just a little insight, you know, when, when IoT really hits, your 7.5 million people and the localization of data center capacity is gonna drive that demand even further. Because, you know, when you have the network, the network is leading to capacity that needs to be closer to the people and closer to the network. So I see Hong Kong continuing to grow. <laughs> Those buildings are gonna have to get taller, I guess, or something is gonna have to change. Uh, okay, so I, I just wanna quickly wrap up. We've got one last question I wanna, and we can just do this across. You know, how, how can we um, work together on the sustainability vision? Just take APAC. You know, here we've got three countries represented that have significant growth right? Or potential growth that's happening. How, you know, what, what should we be doing to, to actually uh, drive this vision for APAC? And that's open to anyone. Yeah, I, I think iMason provide a great platform because what well, Asia, APAC, it's uh, very unique in a way because I attended the North America one uh, a while ago mm -hmm. and it's one country, uh, big country, uh, while in APAC, I mean, it's very fragmented, different countries, uh, doing different things, different regulations, smaller market, very niche. Uh, but I, I, I do believe that iMason provide a great platform for, for us to, to, to join forces, to share best practice and, and have an APAC community 
uh, to to share and 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 meet regularly uh, to 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 get out new ideas, share with one another, uh, so that we can drive this whole thing in a united manner uh, in APAC. Uh, that that's just my two cents. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yali, yeah. your thoughts? Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, we need to really work together on this vision and uh, we lead by example, right? We, in our data center design or our, or, you know, whatever the business we're in, we need mm -hmm. to lead by example. We, we uh, really go, ex go the extra miles to support sustainability. And uh, we need to go out of our way to try to influence where we can uh, from a uh, you know, partner that we work with, the, uh, uh, the, the whole ecosystem, and also the policy makers, uh, because the policy itself plays a, a major role on the efficiency of the infrastructure. Uh, yeah. I take China, for example, it's for sure. There are uh, definitely uh, a, a lot of progress made, but there are uh, a, a, a lot of more that could be done by uh, from the areas of uh, better uh, information sharing. Um, yeah. You know, for the same data, you could uh, you know probably store it or collect it once and then effectively share it, and then also share best practices, and then um, uh, also. Uh, from a network and and the whole from a technology perspective there are better ways to interconnect our uh, our ecosystem our mm -hmm. networks to make it more efficient so it, that would uh, definitely help with the the environment as well it will it will help our future so narendra your thoughts so my thought is uh, uh, goes uh, side by side by what raymond has recommended like i mentioned infrastructure, I, I mentioned the platform should uh, be spreaded across the APAC and promote it well and enable growth uh, uh, on the solar side, uh, renewable energy. So involve all the uh, providers uh, who is offering services like solar and they have, they sh we should provide them a platform to give their uh, uh, s solution. And as an operator, we'll put our requirement there that we want one gigawatt of energy in five years, but in a sustainable manner, you know? Right. So this platform will also and give direction to our vendors, our partners. We should promote this as a, in, like we discussed uh, in last, um, uh, 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 when we talked, like it, it's kind of incubation for renewables, sustainable and solar energy companies or innovators, give a platform and operator like us will contribute and purchase from that uh, those startup and deploy their technology in our data center. Gotcha. So David, uh, wrap us up on your thoughts. All right. I, yeah, I'm, I'm more focused. I, yeah, I want to be more focused on the implementation side. So when you mm -hmm. talk to uh, Christian Blatty, Joe Kawa, and these folks, and they will talk about the sustainability without even mentioning risk management. It's <laughs> not they don't care about risk management because they know how. When you talk about the Chinese, the hyperscale data center um, executives, they were talk about, they were focused on risk management without mm -hmm. talking about sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't care. They can't afford to. So my, my, my suggestion to IM and to the entire community really is when we talk about sustainability, we need to be mindful. There are technical technology gaps amongst the regions Absolutely. and uh, risk management is very high on many people's mind, especially in developing countries. So um, I have done, I personally have done some work and we can talk this offline. Yeah. And if we are able to bring the risk management and the sustainability together and we'll go further. Gotcha. Excellent. Well, um, for the folks that are listening, uh, first off, panelists, thank you very much. We're going to go into a Q&A session now, but uh, this Q&A is really about brainstorming. And so, David, if you could, uh, I'd like you to put in there from a Chinese uh, perspective, uh, just in, in, in Chinese language, if you could, um, you know, what does this uh, vision mean to you? We're going to be doing a, a rapid fire uh, asking people to submit their ideas. Okay, so, okay. So, so if you could put that in there. And then for folks that are on here, um, we want you to use the chat box. 
in there, we want you to start thinking. You've heard from the leaders here um, about what this vision means to them. We would like you to tell us what it means to you. Okay, so as you start putting this back in here, we'll be pulling things up. Uh, go ahead and put it in, in Chinese as well. David will translate that. We'll pick a few of these uh, to start having a conversation uh, with the panel itself. Um, so first off, there, we've got one with uh, five questions. So <laughs> this come in as well. So while we're, uh, we're waiting for the input here, um, and we're gonna do this rapid fire, I'm just gonna ask a few questions and uh, if people wanna jump in here. Um, uh, it's interesting that PUE was born from IT and the tech companies focused on M&E energy consumption and no focus on massive inefficiency of the IT hardware and software utilization. <laughs> I think we need, <laughs> we need to now make sure that data center facilities operate work uh, more closely with the IT and business users of the data center to ensure the overall usage is as effective as possible to get the maximum benefit for every kilowatt consumed, preferably renewably. So the question, what is iMasons doing to fully integrate the ambition of every click improves the future with one, data center developers, operators, and vendors? And so um, I, I guess I can answer that one. The, the main thing for us is that how do we bring people together to have these really critical conversations? You know, I, I tell you, when, when we got the, the leadership team in there to start talking about defining the problem for sustainability, what are we trying to solve? There was 14 pages of notes that came out of that. And then what emerged was this vision and then five initiatives that we're going to be going through next. That, that concept of being able to have people come together is where I think what you were say, saying, Raymond, when we can bring the, the, the big bright minds together, you can solve a lot of problems, right? But you all have to be focused on what problem you're trying to solve. So starting with the vision and then going into those five initiatives that we've got outlined that came from the community, about how we can solve uh, or actually uh, implement that vision is where I think um, we start to do that. Here's another one for, for you, Yali. I think on the telco and carrier side, is there anything that uh, can be done uh, to help drive this vision? Because I know you got a ton of experience in the, in the telco side in your career, correct? Uh, definitely. Um, so on, on that, if we can improve the efficiency of our telco network and how we, interconnect and uh, the, the, the way the current, you know, uh, move uh, forward toward a more inter uh, interconnected infrastructure and a more efficient interconnect, then I think we would be able to really improve the uh, efficiency and, uh, and help mm -hmm. the sustainability. And isn't 5G going to be uh, driving a lot more towers, a lot more Pico and uh, femtocells, et cetera? around uh, yes yeah definitely yeah they, they will be more but i would say one thing i i saw that china is doing uh really well from a policy perspective they they ask the different carriers to share the towers the cell towers uh -huh. so that's a, that's a that's a, <laughs> I, I think that's a very good uh initiative from the government side to ensure efficiency in in the you know the cell towers otherwise you see you know everybody yeah. builds their own so right yeah Especially in Hong Kong, right, Raymond? <laughs> There's just not a lot of places to put them. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So uh, somebody came up here, uh, Bargov uh, was saying that uh, a very good vision offers us a great opportunity to collaborate and develop a fraternity working together on a common goal. So uh, it, it, I love this because it's really about the community, right? We're uniting the builders of the digital age on common causes of things that we can go back and solve together. So that's, uh, that's great. So another question that came in here uh, for base load operations, um, you know, uh, what could we do together? And remember what we we're saying about the, the energy storage and things. Is there anything else that, you know, pooling resources or doing something when it comes down to, um, I think what you were talking about, Narendra, the, uh, the ability to aggregate demand, yeah. drive cost, right? Efficiency. Right. This is, like must have thing and we should focus on this and uh, adopt that. So like Malta INC is the uh, X company incubator, um, uh, incubation from Google uh, futuristic technology uh, company and they now started serving this. And second, Google uh, in last uh, discussion, we uh, spoke to uh, Joe Kawa and yep. he mentioned, come up with AI machine learning and they are reducing 40% uh, they are optimizing the 40% thing. And I believe that 
Google should open source that technology to any data center can adopt that, you know? And similarly, uh, we have to invest in these technologies and make it publicly available. So any data center operator can use it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That's, that's my view. Excellent. So uh, yeah, we have a choice to make during our brief visit to this beautiful blue and green living planet, to hurt it or to help it. Straight from Yali. That was a very good one, Yali. <laughs> So that's a quote actually that really resonates with me. It's from Ray Anderson. Uh, it's just something that really resonates with me. I thought to share with everyone here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, um, uh, actually, I think we're running over a little bit on time here. So um, I wanted to uh, just give me a quick wrap up of a message that you would like to give as leaders in the industry back to the industry itself. So Raymond, would you like to start? What should people think about? Um, no, no, I think just around the, the whole sustainability that we've been talking about the, the whole morning, um, I, I do believe that there got to be a way that instead of just focus on the business side of it, which is to generate profit for our shareholder and all this, which is extremely important, um, and, and, um, but how to do it in a sustainable manner, uh, mm -hmm. you just need to put, put, put more thoughts into it and there got to be a way. So, yeah, I'm confident that we can, we can make it through. So David, your, uh, your final thoughts. Okay, uh, uh, similar to what I just mentioned, I think that as, a, a, as an industry, you know, we need to collectively think about the sustainability in, in the sense, in the scope of business models. So sustainability, well, businesses are created not to preserve mm -hmm. the nature. We want to make money, right? And that, that is the core. And how we can align making profit while maintaining a, a, a good environment right. and how do we combine these two? That would be the key. Gotcha. This goes to triple bottom line. Look that up. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, Yali, your perspective, your final uh, thoughts. Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, so when we look at the GDP growth, we should really watch out for the energy consumption per unit GDP. And uh, there, there's a long way to go. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> definitely, but we can get there. That's what I'm confident yes, in. Definitely. All right. So Narendra, bring us home all the way from Taj Mahal. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, technology has improved uh, all of our lives and future generation, and it is adding, keep adding innovations and solving global problems, all kinds of problems. Think COVID or think any, anything related to health or going into the space. Uh, so technology is solving, and technology will require more and more energy. Mm -hmm. But we cannot stop that. But the, what we can do to, to solve that problem, to support those innovators or innovate, right? And adopt, or if you can't innovate, adopt that technology and optimize it and uh, promote it. These are the three fundamental things. We should do that as an industry. Excellent. And uh, just to wrap this back up, uh... Chris Miller, uh, I think from Chiora, actually made a quote. And those that don't know this, uh, I apologize, but it says, it's not easy being green, Kermit the Frog. <laughs> so we're going to be green. We're going to drive this vision. And I want to thank you very much for your insights. Uh, very, very um, uh, inspirational as well. I, I want to just, again, say thank you for the work that you're doing and also for the work you're going to be doing in the future. Uh, we appreciate the leadership that you're doing in each of your regions and as far as what we're going to be doing around the world. So thank you for joining the panel. I appreciate that. Thank you.